Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I want to observe that something people may not see on TV, that this place is packed. Um, I see rows of people here uh, listening to this uh, testimony, and I judge that maybe three or four of them are, are over 30 years old. Um, this is something that's obviously of great importance to um, people in this building. This is as packed as the Mueller hearings might be in the Judiciary Committee. Not as many members, um, but the crowd is certainly interested. And I also want to respond to um, my colleague, Mr. Johnson, about the Green New Deal. I don't support the Green New Deal uh, for two reasons. Um, one is um, a policy reason. It contains economic strategies and things like guaranteed jobs that are um, extraneous to climate action. And um, I think uh, with which I disagree. So in fact, I think uh, most of the members of this committee on the Democratic side have not sponsored the Green New Deal, probably maybe for that reason, but, but for the other reason, it's even more fundamental, is that it's divisive. Um, I, I feel like we are, uh, that, that people have explained some, some pretty overwhelming impacts of climate change. Even Mr. Cass uh, suggests they may be overstated, but uh, no one denies that these, these are issues before us. My mom always told me to uh, pray for the best but plan for the worst. So with respect to you, I'm, I'm concerned about um, what uh, Dr. K Dr. Hayhoe said. Um, and we need, I think, to make radical change. But I think to do that, to get radical results, we're gonna have to moderate our politics. The, the first thing I heard in here was um, about the Green New Deal and the cost of it, and I think you know, it's, it's a fact that most of us haven't endorsed it for that reason. I also heard from my own, my own side of the aisle how Republicans are to blame for this, and I, I don't know whether that's true or not, but I'm, I'm not, I did litigation, that's not what I'm here for. I think we're here to solve problems. And I think um, we've got a pretty big one in front of us. So I have suggest I have taken a different approach. I just want to call to your attention to each of the four of you, which is I was thinking, what you know, what we've been working on this for a while. I've been in Congress. This is my fourth term. Um, people have all sorts of good ideas about what to do about climate. Um, and uh, I decided to put them together. So I went back and looked for all the, um, we've done this in conjunction with um, academics from Duke and Stanford, uh, UCSD. Uh, we've looked back at all the, uh, we looked back at all the um, ideas, the bills that had been introduced in this Congress and the last Congress. And we compiled them into what we called the climate playbook. And it, for you um, people under 30, it's the pinned tweet on my official Twitter account. I'd ask you to look at it, but it's ways to reduce, it's ideas for reducing emissions from various sectors of the economy including manufacturing, electricity, uh, transportation, agriculture, promoting energy efficiency, something we can all get behind, and everything except what Mr. Johnson said about the Green New Deal, by the way, I agreed with. Um, reducing pollution, increasing R&D investment, adaptation and resiliency, there's all sorts of ideas out there that we can get behind today if we get our politics behind us a little bit and start to work together. Um, and I want to ask Ms. Ms. Hayhoe, as kind of a, kind of famous for being not just a climate scientist but also an evangelical Christian, so you're in circles that a lot of Democrats don't um, don't travel in all the time, and wanted to know if you had any ideas for me as a Democrat on how we might be able to engage people in really solving this problem, which is bigger than politics. Thank you. So I am an evangelical Christian. My husband is a pastor, and. What I have found is that so often we think people don't have the right values to care, and we need to figure out how to change people's values. But through thousands of conversations that I've had with people in our faith community in Texas and beyond, I realize that we all already have those values. We all care about our families. We care about our communities. We care about people who are suffering today, poverty, hunger, and more. And those are the exact values that we need to care about a changing climate. So it isn't a case of emphasizing what divides us. It is, as you just said, a case of emphasizing what unites us, because that is far greater. I think that's well said. I think um, you see this uh, in the evangelical environmental movement is taking this up. Um, and you know, look, I, I used up all my time talking, but um, politics is about us. It's not about the world. Uh, we're, here to, we're here doing politics ostensibly as a means to an end. Uh, and I think we ought to think about that. Um, and I, I would ask my colleagues on both sides of the aisle to, to let's work together, check out these ideas that we've, we've assembled, and see if we can't start uh, making real action. 
I yield back. 